Praise God. It's great to see you guys again, all my brothers and sisters in Christ and all my followers all over the world that's watching my sermons and my prophecies. It's great to see you guys again. Before I get started, uh, let's bow our heads and go into prayer. Father God, thank you for all your blessings. Thank you for your grace, your mercy, your love. Thank you for this beautiful day. Help us, give us strength, and help all the needy people and all the people that are sick. Heal them in the name of Jesus. And the Bible says that by the stripes of Jesus, they are healed. Also, uh, we thank you for the food that you're going to give us today, that you have provided, the shelter, and help us and guide us and give us wisdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Okay, you guys, today is going to be a true story that happened when I was a young kid. I was about 10 years old. And it's going to be about, the title is going to be Green Eye Mexican Doll with a Yellow Dress. You see, people don't understand that the devil, the corrupted, mean devil, you know, he uses the power of demonic evil spirits and witchcraft. But God is almighty. And uh, people try to play around with witchcraft, which God forbids. It's in, the, it's in the Bible that God does not permit that stuff. That stuff is bad. It's the point of no return. And it's just the work of the devil. But God defeated the devil. When he was crucified, he went to the pits of hell and got the keys to the kingdom to set you free. Amen, amen. Okay, what happened? The green eye Mexican dog with the yellow dress. What happened one day, uh, my mom's sister, her name is Mine. That's not her real name, it's just a, a short name. Um, her name is Mina. She came to San Antonio, Texas to visit us from Corpus Christi, Texas. See, Mina gave my mom, she brought a doll. She brought a green eye Mexican doll with a yellow dress. You know, it's a, it's a doll. About, it was about that high and about that round. And it was beautiful looking doll. So she brought it for my mom as a gift. And my mom, you know, she liked it. It was a beautiful gift from her sister. And she put it on top of the coffee table in the uh, living room. And what happened, she put it in the center of the coffee table in the living room, like I said. And um, this doll, for some strange reason, I don't know why, it always caught my attention. There was something that like it draws you and you wanted to just look at it and stare at it. And like it would draw me to see it. There was something about those eyes in the doll. Like it was really, really looking at you. And like it was staring at you. And the eyes, they seem to be following you when, whenever you move. Like the eyes were following you, looking at you. And, um, it, you know, whenever you move in the living room, it was moving. And ever since we got that doll, it was causing many conflicts and problems. Plus also what happened... My mom got very sick. She was losing a lot of weight. She was always sick. And uh, she was not eating. She was feeling really miserable. 
And then one night, my mother got extremely sick, losing a lot of blood when having a bowel movement. And at a short moment, uh, I wasn't there because as far as I remember, we were sleeping, you know, we were kids, me and my brothers. And at a short moment, uh, according to the story that my mom gave us when we were a little older, and he, she told us that, that she passed away and her spirit left. But when this was happening, she, she prayed to God to bring her back because we were all still small and that we all needed her. And the thing that's so amazing is that the mind is very powerful. Even while the spirit is leaving, you can still think with your mind. That's very powerful. The mind is very powerful. Even when the spirit is leaving, you can still think with your mind. And God answered my mom, my mom prayer right away and her spirit came back and she was alive again. And after this event, you know, we all realized that since ever since we got this doll, all of these problems with my mother's health started. So then my mother took the doll after this, you know, we, uh, they came to the conclusion that it's the doll. That ever since the doll was brought to the house, these things were happening. And what happened then after uh, my mom came back and uh, her spirit returned to her, the following day in the afternoon, I remember we all realized that... Um, you know, all these problems with my mom's health started with the doll. So then my mother took the doll outside and she set it on fire and burned it. I was there. I saw when she did that. She took the doll outside and she set it on fire and burned it. You see, guys, sometimes people, they seem to be nice. They bring you gifts and, you know, it was thought of a how. The doll was from a house with witchcraft. And, um, you know, my dad saw my mother died and she he witnessed all this. But I was about 10 years old. I believe I was in the fourth grade, probably fifth, but more likely the fourth grade. I was about 10 years old. And after all of this that happened, we then uh, found out later on, we found out that Roman. He was a wish uh, a warlock also, and a very bad person. Roman, we found out that he gave Mina the doll, and to give it to my mother, and the doll was worked on by Miguel. See Miguel, he lived in Seguin, Texas, and he was the real big uh, warlock, and he used to come to Vijito Barbon. But the doll was worked on by Miguel with witchcraft. And we came to the conclusion that all of this started with the doll. And after it was set on fire, everything came to an end. So God spoke to my mom and said, you know what? You need to burn that doll. Take it outside and burn it. And then since then, everything went away. She was in perfect health. Problems disappeared. Conflicts disappeared. And um, everything returned to normal. But the devil, he always trying to mess people over, trying to do bad things. And the sad part about it was that a lot of this was from our own relatives. You know. And also, um, people, you need to realize that when you get involved with this kind of stuff, like witchcraft, card reading... All this is work of the devil. You're dealing with the devils and the demons. And God does not like it. It's in the Bible. And you need to not get involved in these things. And the reason I shared this test, uh, this uh, story is that I want people to know that, you know, witchcraft does exist. 
the Bible talks about it. And just wanted to kind of like open you guys' eyes up, let you know that this stuff really goes on. This stuff really happens. And we need to avoid these bad things, avoid people that do this kind of stuff because it's very, very bad. And uh, we need to stay focused in Jesus, read the Bible and pray and uh, avoid these kind of people because the devil is a really mean devil. Well, you know, there's this song that uh, it's an old song and you know, people don't understand that Jesus paid a debt. He paid a debt that uh, he did not owe. He paid a debt so we could have our sins forgiven. And it's a beautiful song. It's uh, He paid a debt, a debt he did not owe. Beautiful, beautiful song. About eight years, I think I may be singing it once before or twice before at the most. I don't know why, because it's a good song. Yes. I dug it out of the memory lane archives, and I'm going to sing it for you. And it's simply entitled... He paid a debt he did not owe. And how true that is, friends. So listen amen. to the words that are minister to amen, you. Amen, okay? amen. He paid a debt he did not owe. I owed a debt. I could not pay. Amazing song, amazing grace. Christ Jesus paid the debt that I could never pay. A debt he paid upon the cross. He cleansed my soul from all its dross. I thought that no one could all my sins erase. Amen, amen. Amazing grace. Christ Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. Think about it. Amazing grace. Christ Jesus paid a debt that I could never pay. He didn't give to me alone. He gave himself. Now he's my Lord. He's gone to heaven to make for me a place. Praise God, praise God. What a beautiful, beautiful song. Praise God. Amen. All right, guys, this is this is a verse I want to read from the Bible. It's in the Old Testament, chapter 5. And uh, like I said, a long time ago, I made a promise to God. I was in a bad situation, and I told him to help me, set me free, and I was going to preach for him and uh, spread the good word to uh, the whole world. And thank God that I'm finally doing it after about 35 years. But it says here, 
on chapter 5, verse 4 and 5. When thou vow a vow unto God, and you defer not to pay it, for he has no pleasure in fools, pay that which thou hast vowed. Better it is that thou shalt not vow than that thou shalt vow and not pay. So what it's saying here is that if you make a promise to God, you need to keep the promise to God. And if you cannot keep a promise, don't even make it. So I feel a big relief in my heart, a big relief in my soul that finally I'm doing it. I made a promise and now I'm fulfilling that promise. Amen. Well, guys, don't forget that um, I'm still trying to raise funds for Bibles. I'm getting calls from all over the world. There's people that have churches. They need uh, Sunday school supplies for the kids. They need Bibles. They need clothes. I mean, I've been getting calls from Kenya and, you know, South Africa, Pakistan, India, the Philippines, Sweden, Vietnam, all over the United States. I greatly appreciate it. You guys could help me out. Anything would be great. You know, dollar, five, ten, twenty, everything adds up. Help me to help all the needy people that need help. I got a GoFundMe link on the Facebook. Greatly appreciate it. Please help me out. Well, guys, don't forget, I'm also on uh, YouTube, Instagram, and uh, give me a thumbs up, share with all your friends, family, so they could spread the word of Jesus, because, you know, Jesus is going to be returning soon, sin is out of control, it is really, really bad, and that's why Corona's here, I mean, Corona's here because God is shaking up the world. He is fed up, sick of so much sin. So let's uh, focus on Jesus. Let's pray, read the Bible. The word of God is so powerful. You want to know the past, the present, and the future. It's all right here. It's amazing how people want to know things. And all right here in the Bible. Everything. And it's so sad that here in America, a nation of God, a nation of freedom, we got Bibles everywhere in this country. And there's countries that if they get caught with a Bible, they get killed. Like China, Russia, North Korea, they get caught with a Bible or even a page of the Bible. I mean, they get killed. You know, and then there's other countries that are so poor that they can't buy the Bibles, they want them. And then here in America, People got Bibles in their houses with a with a whole pile of dust. They don't even touch it, read it. And it's so sad to live all your life here in America and never read the Bible. It's so sad. We got the privilege here in America to read the Bible. We need to read the Bible. It's a I mean we're it's an honor that we could do it. I mean, it's so sad to live all your life, and then you pass away, you die, and you never read the Bible. You should at least read it once, from the beginning to the end. You know, when you read the Bible, God speaks to you. God speaks to you, honestly, through the Bible, the Word of God. And He also speaks to you through dreams, through visions. That's how He speaks to people. See, He communicates to us. God may communicate to us through dreams or even visions today. I mean, God speaks to me a lot. Prophecies. He gives me dreams, visions. And everybody that knows me or my friends, they know when I say something, it comes true. Everything that I say comes true. All because I listen. God speaks, I listen. So don't forget... God does speak to us today. Some people got the idea that, oh, God spoke to the only the prophets in the Bible, and he don't speak to nobody no more. No, no, you got it all wrong. God still speaks to us today. 
You just got to keep your ears open. Stop and listen. Okay, guys? And I just want to let you know that read the Bible. Help me get Bibles for people overseas. They don't got Bibles. They need Bibles. They want Bibles and don't have them. So please help me out. Go find me link in my Facebook. Greatly appreciate it. And until next time, God bless you. I love you guys. Have a great day. Amen.